Hello, good evening everyone. How are you tonight? Um, again, we have our Facebook Live on Thursday again. So thank you very much for being here. Um, I can see that there's a lot of people in our comment section already waiting for the uh, session to start tonight. But anyway, uh, we have prepared uh, great questions for you tonight again to practice your nursing prioritization and delegation. Okay, without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce myself for those who do not know me yet. My name is Mr. Alan Matus, and I have been a nurse educator for almost 25 years. I have been teaching nurses uh, passing their NCLEX, and also I am currently a nursing program faculty. I help nurses also pass their uh, nursing program as well and become graduate nurses. And also I am the uh, founder and the owner of Matus Nursing Review and Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. And also, I'm a published author, so I, I have my book in Amazon, and uh, you can actually uh, buy it there if you wish, okay? So that is the book, everyone. Um, it's also now available in the Philippines, and you can email uh, matutsnursingreviewacademy at gmail.com. And the book actually has a, a five-star rating at, uh, up to this time, most of it. So um, hopefully all of you have a copy of, of my book, hopefully, okay? But if not, then grab a copy. Uh, for those who have a copy of my book, uh, please do a shout out if you like my book so far, everyone. So the title of the book is Simple, Fast, and Easy and Clex Review, okay? All right, so that's my book, everyone. Okay, so who's excited for our session for tonight, everyone? Okay, so um, let's do some shout out before we start. Okay, the ones who came in immediately today will get a special shout out, you know, the first people. So we have um, Fresel Dagdag Paz, okay, she's one of our students. Also, Gian Torres, Olayinka Treda Megbeke, okay, Joyce Jamila Flores. We also have Asta Gimere, Jenera Mospeña also. Hi, Jenny, how are you doing? She's one of our students. And then also we have... Uh, uh, Yeslem Cape Castro, and then also we have Benedicta and Ceci Yagwe, and of course, one of my most favorite students. I'm gonna give you a shout out that would be MJ Enrique. So, thank you very much for being here tonight. All right, so can you please tell me where's your location, everyone? And I will give you a shout out as well. Where's your location for tonight? Okay, so from KSA, so we have all right, we have Lori Michelle from KSA. All right, very good. So we are, um, we could be seen across the uh, different continents of the world. Uh, we also have from India also. So we have, uh, okay, uh, Sai Lila from India. Okay, very good. We have Chika Anya. So she's from Texas. Okay, I hope you're safe there. We also have from Florida. Okay, well, again, guys from Florida. Okay, Nepal is Asta, okay, Asta Gimere. So thank you very, very much for being here. So I'm gonna give you more shout outs later on, everyone, okay? So now, what's our agenda for tonight? So the first thing that we're going to discuss is going to be, all right, so let's have an inspirational testimonial first, okay? So this is from one of our students in the online NCLEX Academy, and she just enrolled in the program. And uh, she said, uh, you know, she gave a feedback about the academy. So she said, hi, sir, I'm from Illinois. And thank you for this review. I have learned so much, very informative and not boring. I'm preparing for my NCLEX exam this April. I graduated in 2020 and halfway through our nursing program, we did virtual classes because of the pandemic. So I felt like it affected my learning ability. So after graduating, I don't feel like I learned enough. I'm glad I found your review program. I honestly learned more from you than when I was in the nursing program. So thank you again. So of course, the pandemic has posed uh, great challenges, you know, uh, with uh, our learning, especially that uh, going online. And of course, it's a big adjustment to a lot of students, you know, who has to, uh, transition from the live classroom and then they have to be online. So that's a big adjustment. So hopefully my course will be uh, a good supplement to your preparation for the NCLEX review, okay? All right, and then also for tonight, we're gonna have again the same thing, the free 90-day online NCLEX Academy uh, 
access okay for 90 days so stay stay after the uh, session or the show because we'll post directly in the facebook uh, the winner of our 90-day online access and flex review okay so stay afterwards and check your name all right and also if you haven't done it yet i would like to encourage you guys to share or subscribe if you're watching in youtube okay we would like to have other nurses benefit from this program especially that a lot of your questions in your NCLEX are on nursing prioritization and delegation so we have Tin Kaliao from Abu Dhabi. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, from Barstow is Benedicta. She's one of our students in the academy. Okay, Claire also, she already uh, shared. Thank you very much, Claire. That's very much appreciated. We have Fabian Argant and she is uh, from Massachusetts. So thank you very much for all of the students that we have tonight, okay? All right. So, are you ready for the first question? Without further ado, let's dive directly into our questions for tonight. So we have five questions for tonight that I have prepared for you. And do you know that every week, I may start putting some pharmacology questions as well. So who likes pharmacology questions? So we'll be going over at least one medication every week, probably. Okay, so who likes that idea that we're going to learn a little bit about drugs, okay? especially that pharmacology is a big one in your NCLEX as well. So we'll be having that also here in this uh, session. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's have the first question for tonight, everyone. All right, so the first question will be on prioritization. So this is one of the uh, types of questions that you will be encountering in the NCLEX, wherein you have to rank in order the clients and you have to choose the most unstable client to the most stable client okay so i will read the question the nurse cares for several clients in the neurology unit which client should be seen first rank in order of priority one the 55 year old client with parkinson's disease who just came back from physical therapy two the 34-year-old client with myasthenia gravis whose muscle weakness worsened after administration of edrophonium. Three, the 65-year-old client with multiple sclerosis who asked for dantrolene due to painful leg spasms. Number four, the 39-year-old client with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or ALS who has a temperature of 103 degree Fahrenheit and cloudy urine. So you have to rank in order of priority. So meaning you have to choose, is it number one first, number two first, number three first, or number four, okay? So which one comes first? You have to rank them, you have to put the numbers every one, okay? So rank in order of priority, okay? So you're not going to choose the first client, but you have to choose, is it two, one, four, three, or two, three, four, one, and four, or one, four, three, two. Okay, that's what you have to do, everyone. Okay. Hopefully you can read everybody. Okay. So I would like to give a shout out to some people that just came in tonight. So we have, okay. So we also have uh, other people that I haven't announced. Revelo, Doms, Arnold, hi, welcome here tonight. Okay, Yoshika Singh, thank you very much also for being here tonight as well. Okay, so let's see which patient comes first. Noel Burgos is from Saudi Arabia. Okay, nice to see you here. Okay, then we also have Okay, so Revelo Doms Arnold say, yes, I like pharmacology. Very good. All right. So let's see what will be the answer to this question. And can you give a rational why you chose number one, for example, first, or number two? Why number three? Why number four? What's the reason why it's... Uh, a priority patient first you know why is it the first patient that you have to see what's the reason why you know so what's the reason 
And do you know, uh, do you understand the reason or the path of physiology? You know, why you chose number one, number two, number three, and number four, you know, in terms of prioritization. Is there any airway issue here or breathing or circulation problem or any safety issue probably? So what do you think is the answer? Okay. So let's see. So some people are still giving answers. Um, thank you. Um, I'll give uh, some shout out to some people. So Chinieri Obiocha, thank you very much for being here. I'm giving you a shout out also. John Hernandez, Lisa Sibayan, Walnit Dennis. Okay. All right. So we have also Bida Podel. All right. So let's proceed. The answer to this question, everyone, is going to be, let's see if you got the answer. Okay, the answer is going to be two, four, three, one, everybody. Two, four, three, one. So why is the answer two, four, three, one? So number one. Number two comes first, you know, why? Because number two, the muscle weakness worsened admin after administration of edrophonium. I discussed this in the online NCLEX Academy, and this is a big highlight. I actually did a lecture on this with my students today. In myasthenia gravis, you have two types of crisis. You know, you have your myasthenic crisis, and you also have your cholinergic crisis. So the name of the medication that we give to clients with myasthenia gravis will be your anticholinesterase drugs, okay? And these drugs are being given to increase the level of acetylcholine to increase the muscle strength of patients with myasthenia gravis. So again, remember the name of medication will be anticholinesterase to increase the level of acetylcholine, okay? By blocking your cholinesterase from destroying your acetylcholine, all right? And normally when you give edrophonium to patients with myasthenia gravis, the muscles weakness will disappear, there will be increase in muscle strength. However, if you're giving hydrophonium and the muscle weakness of your patient worsened, then that means your patient is having a crisis and we call that cholinergic crisis, so meaning that the patient has been overdosed. So a myasthenia gravis patient, when you give them uh, anticholinesterase drugs and then they have uh, severe muscle weakness after that, then overdosage is happening. So remember the contrast, you know, uh, please review your cholinergic crisis. And then also the opposite of cholinergic crisis is myasthenic crisis. Myasthenic crisis is when you have under medication. So meaning there's um, uh, lack of uh, medication, your anticholinesterase. So that also results to muscle weakness. So number two is a priority because this is cholinergic crisis and cholinergic crisis because of very high levels of acetylcholine this patient will have parasympathetic symptoms remember parasympathetic so you have your muscle weakness your gastrointestinal disturbances abdominal cramps and possibly because of severe muscle weakness we're talking of airway am i right so airway is a problem here that's why number two is a big priority because it's an emergency so please review again your cholinergic crisis and then also your myasthenic crisis, okay? So edrophonium is an anticholinesterase drug. It is a short-acting medication, okay, for myasthenia gravis, very important. So number two is a priority because the muscle weakness can lead to respiratory problems as well. Now next is number four because ALS having a temperature of 103 is high and cloudy urine that may indicate the presence of infection, right? So that's a priority number. So the next priority is number four, okay? Because 103 is fever. And then we will have your number three, which is a multiple sclerosis patient asking for dantrolene sodium or, or your dantrium. So patients with multiple sclerosis usually will receive muscle relaxants because they have painful leg spasms. So that's number three is going to be next. And then lastly, number one, because it's a Parkinson's disease patient, and I think we consider this patient as stable enough. You know, he just came back from physical therapy, so it's not an invasive procedure. So that's why number one is the most stable patient. So that's why the answer to this question, guys, is going to be two, four, and one. Okay, so who got this right, everybody? Congratulations. Okay, and review again your cholinergic crisis and then also your myasthenic crisis, and don't forget the antidotes. I think sometimes in the past, I discussed this cholinergic and myasthenic crisis also in this program, okay? Especially myasthenic gravis is uh, 
a very interesting uh, disease condition. Okay. Very good, everybody. So those who got it right, congratulations. Okay. Are you ready for our next question? Okay. So we have Ursula actually who commented about your myasthenic crisis and then your cholinergy crisis, you know? Okay. So for cholinergy crisis, your antidote is atropine sulfate because you have to uh, counteract the uh, increased level of acetylcholine. So you have to give an anticholinergic medication. Okay. Atropine, the antidote for myasthenic crisis is going to be your Tensilon or Edrophonium, which is a rapid acting or short acting uh, anticholinesterase drugs to increase the level of acetylcholine of your patient with myasthenia. So don't forget, myasthenic crisis is under medication, cholinergic crisis is over medication. Okay, very good. All right, so let's have the next question, everyone. Number two will be another prioritization question. Let's see if you get the right answer in this. Okay. So congratulations for those who got the correct answer for that question. So congratulations to the ones who got it right. I think that was Shantel Velasco, Rifa Tahera, Ivy Nicolás, okay, Ursula Ogbenta, Revelo Arnold. So let's read question number two. A client is admitted in the emergency room with a diagnosis of bacterial meningitis. Which signs and symptoms should be of most concern to the nurse? Select all that apply. A. Neck rigidity. B. Cloudy fluid drainage from the ear. C. Sensitivity to light. D. Unequal unres unresponsive pupils. And E. Weakness. So again, a client is admitted in the emergency room with a diagnosis of bacterial meningitis. Which signs and symptoms should be of most concern to the nurse? Select all that apply. A. Neck rigidity. B. Cloudy fluid drainage from the ear. C. Sensitivity to light. D. An equal unresponsive pupils. And E. Weakness. So this is a SATA question, everybody. Okay, so which one will be of greatest concern to the nurse? So meaning something is going on with your patient and you need to report because it means that there is a complication going on. So what do you think is the answer to this question, everyone? Okay, the question is of most concern, meaning that it should bother the nurse, okay? What will bother the nurse a client with bacterial meningitis? Okay. And also, if you can put in the comment section, what is your strongest motivation to pass the NCLEX? What is your strongest motivation? If you want to share that, I'll give you a shout out as well. What's the number one reason why you want to become an NCLEX passer? Okay. What is your dream? So let's have the answer to this question. Which one should be of greatest concern to the nurse when someone has meningitis? Okay, we have varying answers, everyone. The answer will be, okay. All right, so let's get the answer, everyone. Let's see if someone got the answers right. Okay. All right. I'll give you another chance. Some of you have wrong answers. Okay. I will give you a clue. There's only two correct answers in this option, not three. Only two correct answers. Okay. So choose only two. I'm going to give you. Thank you, Lorraine, for sharing that. All right, so Jenny, my family, my two kids are my motivation. Excellent, Jenny Ramos. Thank you for that. So change your answer. There's only two correct answers in this option, everyone, not three. Okay. Always remember there is no, there is no pattern in a select all that apply question. You just really have to go for the correct answer. Okay. So use your true or false. Okay, very good. You want to learn because when you start practicing, you want to be having the knowledge to practice, right? So you just want to pass just for the sake of passing 
you want to learn as much as you can and that's why i always advise students that when you review for the nclex what's my number one advice enjoy the learning process have fun be motivated because you want to learn that's the most important thing you want to learn but again it all starts with being organized you have to be organized have a study calendar and find the right resource materials that you will like okay that you feel will be helpful and complete for you guys okay so the answer is going to be let's see all right so the answer everyone to this question is going to be i'll give you a clue all right i already told you in the past that if the disease has a diagnosis you know and it's part of the diagnosis you know it's it doesn't um it's part of the diagnosis it's expected that it should not really concern the nurse unless the symptoms are really like for example vomiting is part of the symptoms of uh, increased icp it should still concern the nurse you know because you have to intervene right but usually um for these type of questions what do you think will be of greatest concern okay so we have number correct answer everyone is going to be b and d okay b and d so you have your cloudy fluid drainage from the ear and then unequal unresponsive pupils now why is letter b something that the nurse should be concerned about why because cloudy fluid drainage from the ear could be your cerebrospinal fluid which could indicate a severe increase in intracranial pressure am i right so we all said in the past the csf leakage is a serious situation because it indicates increasing icp and also the possibility you know the possibility of uh, brain serum herniation and also um, it indicates uh, severe damage happening in the brain of your patient. So that would be your letter B and then your letter D, unequal unresponsive pupils because that's uh, one of the indicators also of brain serum herniation. Now one of the things that we discuss all the time with increased ICP is what's the worst thing that can happen? It's your brain stem herniation. It's when the contents of your brain, the brain stem moves to the side, upwards, downwards, or lateral or uncal. So that's the worst complication of your increased ICP, which is basically the, the herniation of the brain stem. So letter B and D indicates complications, you know? So that would be your letter B and D. Now, when someone has bacterial meningitis, it is expected the person will have neck rigidity or stiff neck, am I right? Or nuchal rigidity. Now your letter C sensitivity to light is expected. So there's already a diagnosis, everyone. If there is no diagnosis, then you will be worried, am I right? So for example, a client is admitted with, let's say signs and symptoms, you know, but then uh which one will concern you if there is neck rigidity and the client is having fever for example so maybe it indicates bacterial meningitis but there's already a diagnosis of bacterial meningitis with a diagnosis so what will be in the number one so you're taking care of this patient it's okay to see neck rigidity sensitivity to light a uh, weakness is part of it but your letter b and b indicates complications or worsening of the condition okay so what are the signs of worsening condition when you have bacterial meningitis probably a uh, fever that is worsening you know very high fever uh, convulsions you have uh, a change in the level of consciousness so for example from being alert the patient becomes stuporous and then lethargic for example that's a change in condition okay and also remember uh, you have to be alert for complications okay be alert for complications and be alert for change of condition all right so the number one concern that you will have is going to be cloudy fluid drench from the ear and unequal unresponsive pupils because they indicate complications everyone okay if there is a headache headache will be part of uh, bacterial meningitis okay although you still have to uh, manage that as well because uh, you know you want to give pain medications because of that all right okay so the answer is going to be letter b and d so remember that everyone okay all right because you don't want to call the doctor and then say i'm reporting this because this is what i'm seeing this patient has bacterial meningitis and the patient has stiff neck uh sensitivity to light and the patient is very weak the doctor will be like yeah that's the reason why we diagnose the patient in the first place right because what because we saw those symptoms so there's they're expected am i right but if you call the physician or the provider and then you say there's already fluid coming out of the ear you know and then you also have uh, 
unequal dilated pupils. You may even have to call the rapid response team. You know, you have to call the emergency team because uh, this uh, situation is uh, ominous. You know, it's really dangerous for your patient. Okay, indications of possible complications. All right, all right. So let's go to number three, everyone. So thank you very much. So Asta made a comment, unequal pupil brain herniation. Okay. Then MJ mentioned learning plans, sir. Okay, thank you. So always remember, um, master your content. And then always remember that content is not enough. It's also how you attack the questions and how you put that into the question as well. Okay, so watch all of my videos in YouTube. All right, because uh, that's one way for you to really learn more about prioritization and delegation. Okay, so let's proceed to the next question, everyone. So this one will be about delegation. So let's see if you're good with this, okay? All right, so which task may be delegated to the licensed practical nurse by the registered nurse in the surgical unit? Select all that apply. A, reinforce client teaching to use the incentive spirometer every two hours. B, create a teaching plan on self-care exercises after discharge c administer two feedings via the ngt d change sterile dressings on the jackson prat train site and e auscultate the abdomen for bowel sounds every two hours which task may be delegated to the licensed practical nurse lpn by the registered nurse in the surgical unit select all that apply a Reinforce client teaching to use the incentive spirometer every two hours. B. Create a teaching plan on self-care exercises after discharge. C. Administer tube fittings via the NGT. D. Change the sterile dressings on the Jackson Pratt train site. And E. Auscultate the abdomen for bowel sounds every two hours. Okay. So what will be the answer in this question? And I've always told the students, in the NCLEX, you select all that apply. The, the rule is it's possible to only have one answer. It's possible to have two answers, three answers, or all of them are correct. So don't look for patterns in, in your SATA question. Just go for the correct answer. If you think there's only one answer, then there's only one answer. Analyze its choice carefully, okay? So which one here is uh, within the scope of practice of the LPN? Okay. Now I do have another question for you tonight, guys. My question is, what is the first thing that you will do once you find out that you pass the NCLEX? What is the first thing that you will do once you pass the NCLEX? So what will you do, guys? Can you share? What is the first thing that you will do once you pass your NCLEX. So let's have positive visualization here because the law of attraction is very important. You need to think positive. Think positive, but at the same time, you need to act, right? So what is the first thing that you have to do when you pass your NCLEX? Okay. So do we have new people coming in tonight? Shout out to Pravina Pothakamuri. Okay. Thank you for being here. Keji Sobola. Hi, how are you? So the first thing that teen will do is Okay. Thanks to God. The first thing I will do. Yes. Okay. Pray. Thanks to God and take my family to celebrate. Yes, Jenny. Okay. And then also, Emma said, I will attend Mass and thank God for passing my NCLEX. Yes, positive energy, everyone. Okay, very important. Okay, yes. So positive energy and also to lower down your level of anxiety. So Chidi said, I will be over the moon. Okay, yes, exactly. And I will be over the moon too. You know, when you text me first thing in the morning that you pass, you just lift up my spirit as well, you know. But the good thing about the NCLEX is that, you know, it's fun to learn NCLEX, you know, as long as you have the right plan, you have the right materials and the tools, very nice bullpens, very nice books, you know, you enjoy the process of learning, enjoy the process of answering questions, you know, 
Okay, go on vacation. Thank you, Chica. I'll go with you, Chica, if you want to go on vacation. Okay? All right. So what's the answer to this question, everyone? Okay. So what tasks are within the scope of practice of your LPN in this question? So let's see. All right. So the answer is going to be A, C, D, and E. Very good. So reinforcing... Reinforcing the client teaching to use incentives parameters within the scope of practice of the LPN. Reinforcement of teaching. So that's okay. Or reminding the client. Am I right? Okay. And then also letter C, administered to fittings by the NGT. Good. Just remember in the NCLEX, LPNs cannot do IV antibiotics, right? No IV medications. On the oral or injectables like your... Uh, intradermal, intramuscular, or sub Q. Your letter D changed the sterile dressings on the Jackson Pratt train site. That's correct. Especially when you have the sterile dressing, that should be the licensed nurse, not the UAP. And letter E, Oscar take the abdomen. Yes, we discussed in the past that LPNs can do specific or focus assessment. So they can do uh, assessment of the abdomen, you know, the auscultation or listen to the breath sounds and then report the findings to the RN and the RN will be the one interpreting the findings if they are abnormal or not and analyze what's going on with your patient. So the answer is going to be A, C, D, E. So congratulations for those who got that right because uh, a lot of you guys, when you're doing well in the NCLEX, you'll be given a lot of delegation questions. So A, C, D. And then you also have your letter E. So congratulations, everybody, for that. Okay. Very good. Your letter B, create a teaching plan on self-care exercises. Teaching is for the RN. You know, the teaching plan, developing that, that would be your RN. Okay. All right. So exciting. Two more questions, everyone. We have five questions tonight. Okay. All right. So thank you. Okay, now let's proceed. If you want to learn more, guys, you can listen to me in the online academy because I give everything, you know, what I know in the academy as well. Okay, all right. So, Loretta said that she will be on cloud nine when she passes the in class. Okay, so let's have your next question. So, this is all about floaters. Okay. So which client in the coronary care unit will be most appropriate to assign to a registered nurse or RN who floated from the medical surgical unit? A, the 53-year-old client who requires discharge instructions after an angioplasty procedure. B, the 44-year-old client who was recently admitted for pacemaker insertion due to worsening heart block. C, the 58-year-old client who needs to be prepared for a coronary artery bypass grafting procedure. Or letter D, the 39-year-old client with heart failure who needs health teaching on sodium-restricted diet. Okay? All right? So, so we have a message from Loretta. Loretta said, I learned a lot with the two previous questions. I will not forget it. I will go over it again when it's released in YouTube. So thank you. All right, so who will be assigned? So when you are in the NCLEX and you answer this question correctly, wow, excellent, everyone, excellent, if you get the right answer, okay? So which client in the CCU will be most appropriate to assign to a registered nurse who floated from the medical surgical nursing unit or medical surgical unit? All right, so I think everybody got the question right. I'm so happy, everyone. You're all answering correctly, I guess. But let me see. Let us see if your, your, your answer is right. Some people said letter A. Okay. Some people answered letter D. So what's your principle here? What are the principles in floating? The principles in floating, number one, is that um, you have to assign a patient wherein the patient only needs general nursing skills. Okay or a skill that someone is doing from another unit that could be done in the unit where the person or RN is floating. And you have to assign a stable patient as well, okay? So 
you have to ask first yourself, you know, what's the scale of this RN coming from the med search going into the CCU? All right. So the answer to the question is going to be only one answer, guys. Okay. That would be letter D is the answer. Okay. So letter D is the answer because it's a heart failure patient who needs health teaching on sodium restricted diet. So number one is a stable patient. Okay. And then sodium restricted diet. So health teaching is something that the medical surgical nurse will be doing in the unit also. So and sodium restricted diet, all nurses know that, right? So stable and only needs teaching. And teaching is within the scope or practice of the RN, you know, teaching. If it's an LPN, then maybe not, right? So it has to be the RN. So Larry D is correct. So this is a question for the RNs, you know, in the NCLEX, not for LPNs. Now your letter A is a person who will be discharged. Maybe that is a stable person, your letter A. However, remember this is an angioplasty patient. But the reason why A is not the answer because discharge instructions, there could be some protocols or policies that the nurse may not be familiar with, the floater. So that's why letter A is not the best patient because discharge instructions, that could be a little bit complex sometimes in one unit. Now letter B, um, Recently admitted for pacemaker insertion, that is an unstable patient, okay, especially monitoring. So you don't want to give that to someone who is floating. Larry C, 58-year-old uh, who needs to be prepared. Of course, there are policies and procedures, again, standard procedures to prepare patients for surgery. So you don't want to assign the uh, floater to Larry C. So the answer, everyone, okay, very good. The answer is going to be Larry D because it's only health teaching excellent okay thank you guys i hope this question comes out in your inflex okay all right so are you ready for the last question our last question for tonight is going to be about pharma so every week possibly you know we will choose one drug very common in the NCLEX, and we will learn about that medication because i know some of you <laughs> the most uh difficult part is learning your pharmacology am i right so we'll be discussing that tonight all right, so let's pick one classification of medication for tonight. Number one, a client is prescribed a lanzonate before discharge. So which instruction should be included when taking this medication? So remember, a lanzonate in your NCLEX, uh, you don't really have brand names. You really have generic names in the NCLEX all the time. So first, you have to think, what is a lanzonate? You know, it ends in nate. So this, what is this medication? Okay. Your alendronate. So letter A, take the drug after getting up for the day. So what you're going to do here is, before you do your select all that apply, you have to check your content. What do you know about the medicine? And then you go through its choice elimination process. A, take the drug after getting up for the day. B, take the antacids after taking the medication. C, chew the tablets to ensure proper absorption. D, eat meals within 30 minutes of taking the drug. E, take the drug with a full glass of plain water. And letter F, remain sitting upright for 30 minutes after taking the drug. Okay, what's the answer, everyone? Okay, again, this is a landronate. Landronate, which instruction should be included when taking this medication? Select all that apply. A, take the drug after getting up for the day. B, take antacids after taking the medication. C, chew the tablets to ensure proper absorption. D, eat meals within 30 minutes of taking the drug. E, take the drug with a full glass of plain water. And F, remain sitting upright for 30 minutes after taking the drug. Okay, what's the answer? All right, so make sure that you know your content in terms of this medication, everyone. Very, very important. Okay. Very important, everybody, that you know how to take this medicine, especially when you're giving discharge instructions to the patient. Very important. So... Most likely in your NCLEX, it could be a select all that apply question, all right? Okay, so let's proceed. Okay, all right, so let's have the answer to the question. 
the answer will be, let's see if you got it right, everyone. Okay, so the answer to the question is going to be, all right, are you ready? That would be A, E, and F. Okay, so your alendronate, everyone, alendronate is also known as your, let's say your Ozomax. You also have other drugs like Residronate, for example. Um, so alendronate, it ends in nate. This is a bone resorption inhibitor drug. So when you say bone resorption inhibitor, it prevents the breakdown of your bone. Okay, the breakdown of the bone. This is a drug to prevent osteoporosis, all right? And one of the side effects of alendronate is going to be is going to be gastric distress or esophageal distress, so irritation to the esophagus. So it's a uh, biphosphonate, actually. Yes, it's a biphosphonate medication. Very good. To treat osteoporosis, especially for menopausal women. So number one, letter A, is the correct answer because you take the drug after getting up for the day or upon waking up, okay? Now, letter E, you take the drug with a full glass of plain water. So plain water only, not mineral water, okay? Letter F, remain sitting upright for 30 minutes after taking the drug. So what are some of the important things you need to remember about your Posamax, everyone? So take this medication by mouth once a day. After getting up for the day and before taking your first food, beverage or other medication. Take it with a full glass, 6 to 8 ounces or 180 to 240 milliliters of plain water. Swallow the tablet whole. Do not chew or suck on it. So you do not chew. Then stay fully upright, either sitting, standing, or walking for at least 30 minutes. And do not lie down until after your first food of the day. So it's very important for the patient not to lie down to prevent irritation, right? Alendronate works only if taken on an empty stomach. Wait at least 30 minutes after taking the medication before you eat or drink anything other than plain water. They even suggest preferably one to two hours you should not eat, okay? Do not take this medication at bedtime, so not at bedtime or before rising for the day. It may not be absorbed and side effects may occur. What are the medications that interfere with the absorption of Posamax or Alondronate? Would that be your calcium or iron medications? No, okay? Vitamins, no. Antacids, no. Coffee, no. Tea, soda, mineral water, no also. Calcium enriched juices and food can decrease the absorption of Alondronate. Do not take this for at least 30 minutes after taking Alondronate. Okay, so remember that everyone. Okay, all right. So I hope that you learned something about that medication for tonight, everyone. Okay, um, you usually students know that you have to remain sitting upright or standing or walking. But then what are the other things you need to remember about your frozen mask? So very good, everybody. I hope that you learned something about this uh, medication. Okay, all right. So it comes in a tablet form. All right. So thank you very much, everyone, for tonight. Before I end, you know, I would just like to plug in a little bit about my program. Okay, so I will see you guys next Thursday again. But then for my program, I do have the online NCLEX Academy if you're interested. So we have a workbook that everybody likes. You know, the workplace is awesome. Can you give a shout out, everyone, if you like my workbook, please? Okay. And then also we have the self-study program, we have the 10-day live webinar, and then also we have the Tuesday class, which is the fast track as well. So check our website at matusnursingreview.com or matusnursingreviewacademy.com, everyone. And our courses are very affordable for students, and the courses comes with a lot of uh, uh, features, you know, like end of lesson quizzes, our Facebook live recordings, uh, the ebook and also um, final diagnostic tests. I respond to your emails or comments in the academy. Whoever's enrolled in the academy here, give a shout out also everybody, okay? So, all right, okay. So I have been so busy lately because we have like hundreds of students in the academy and I have to respond to all students who sends me an email, okay? And also we have um, our very nice shirt, uh, merchandise shirt, uh, shirt. So if you wanna have this everybody, 
think positive, I can do it and nothing will stop me. And I really like this shirt. So actually one student uh, bought this already as well and she sent me a photo. So thank you. All right. Okay. The winner last week was uh, Binda Hodel. Last week she was the one our winner for the 90 day online access. So if you haven't already emailed us yet, email us right now so that we can uh, we can uh, enroll you in the program for 90 days. And then congratulations, Bidia. All right? Okay, everyone. Thank you very much. It's another Thursday, and I hope that you all learned something tonight. And thank you very much, uh, Ursula, also one of my favorite students as well. Okay? And also we have uh, Paz, Anna, the best, and Coach Review class, and Workbook, and the ebook. Thank you very much, Anna. Okay, uh, really appreciate it. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, what our students have been discovering in our program is that the program is complete, but it's simple, fast, and easy as well. So giving you all only the most important information that you could be, so that you can pass the NCLEX and become safe nurses. Okay, so I'll see you next week, everybody. Thank you very much and have a good night.